Okay, welcome to uh, PowerPoint Karaoke with an AI twist. Um, tonight you're competing for this beautiful trophy, handcrafted this afternoon from the Bring and Buy buckets. Uh, <laughs> Um, the, the, the very best makerspace on the whole site is the kids' makerspace because they have got holographic sticky back plastic and googly eyes and many lovely different types of uh, coloured LEDs. So we have created this little creature and the popular vote, when, when at the end when we cheer everyone, the one with the most cheers will, will win this and take it home and cherish it forever. It's quite hefty. I'm going to put it at the front of the stage. Yeah. Can, uh, okay, so the, 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 G, the, the AI twist to this is that we use GPT-3 to generate titles for the presentations. The problem is that it's too good. <laughs> um, so I fed it all the EMF talks from 2016 and 2018 and it generated the most plausible sounding talks you can imagine. <laughs> so, um, so when you get, when you see the list of talks, you will see that, yes, indeed, um, any single one of them could be a, a talk, the same, it could be a talk that you just host here normally. Um, so yes, these are the rules, that the speaker will choose a prompt. Each prompt has five slides. The slides will move on after one minute. Uh, so there's none of this next slide, please. You get your one minute per slide. Um, and then we cheer a lot. And we cheer a lot, we cheer our speakers as we go because uh, not, not everyone does this, uh, you know, stand up on stage uh, com talking complete and other bollocks about something they've never seen before. So that deserves a big cheer. And the rest of us make a job out of it. Yeah, the rest of us, this is what we do for a living. <laughs> I'm an academic, it's kind of par for the course. Um, okay, so... Anything else we need to tell people? Yeah. I think the main thing is, in fact, I'm going to be weird and do a rolling mic if my sound goes, oh, he's on it, he's on it. Um, I think the main thing is, have fun. Is everyone ready to have fun? Yeah? I will ask, try and keep what you're saying relatively PG-13. None of the sides have anything too adult on them. Uh, if, a, if the odd swear slips in, that's all right, but be good. And the other question I was going to ask was, is everyone okay if I take a picture of you all? Yeah. yeah, cool. Right, let's see just how, look at all these amazing people I can't see because of the lights in here, but it's fine. And I'm going to do the sad thing. Come on, let's get, a, let's get a selfie with all these amazing people. See how many we can get in there. Oh, look at them all. There we go. Champion, right, so first on, I believe you had uh, an initial volunteer. I do, it's my husband. <laughs> What's his name? His name is Mick Wright. Um, Come on up. And uh, yeah, where's he, where he gone? Maybe where he's run he? away. Mick, now Mick. is your time. There he is. Uh, <laughs> right, can we get a round of applause for Mick? <laughs> and I will say, I'm still fairly sure I've been to at least one of these talks this weekend. And these are from a bot. <laughs> So I'd like to say he's, he has had no sight of this in advance. Uh -huh. uh, there has been no insider knowledge. Um, he's literally just being talked into this. So you get to pick uh, what you think. Choose your fate. Do. No pressure. I Some pressure. Do. Uh, <laughs> right down off the uh, so Let's do fun. Rise of the Machines. Yeah. Future of Humanity, the Rise you, of the You machines. tap it, it's a touch screen. Yeah, We're high tech we here. Go. Oh, right, so um, okay. let's do this. You are Mick and you have chosen, what? Oh, it's backwards. I see, I see why Rob Manuel had trouble now. Yeah, the future of humanity, the rise of machines. Okay. When you're ready, Mick, you click and it begins. Right, okay, here we go. Uh, okay, this is the future of humanity, the rise of the machines. Uh, let's click to begin. Click to, I'm clicking to begin. Oh no, hang on. There we go, okay. <laughs> So as we know, uh, throughout history, uh, the, the balance of, of, uh, of society has been between uh, how much money we have and how many potatoes we can purchase. And in the middle, uh, either helping or hindering us in our purchase of potatoes uh, are the machines, uh, represented here by a calculator. Um, 
The question for us is, in the future, will uh, machines uh, stop us from accessing the potatoes we need, or will they uh, enable us to have as many potatoes as we wish? Uh, it's a very difficult question, one that has um, uh, pondered by many philosophers over the years. Uh, and uh, to my mind, I think that, the, that I'm, a, I'm a techno optimist. I believe that the machines are going to help us get many more uh, potatoes, uh, and that is uh, a great thing. Uh, some of those potatoes may be NFTs, uh, very difficult to eat an NFT potato, uh, but uh, very uh, exciting nonetheless. Okay, money uh, is good, services are good, <laughs> goods are good. <laughs> You take the money, you use the money to uh, purchase some goods, but what if the services, they get in the way and they stop you from purchasing the goods? The goods, of course, in this case, being the potatoes. Uh, this is, uh, and this is a symbol that I, I don't understand, but um, perhaps if uh, I had the right technology, I would understand the symbol. Perhaps that symbol, uh, I guess it's a P, it comes, brings me back to potatoes. Uh, <laughs> And, uh, and how I'm going to access those. But possibly the underlying theme of this talk is becoming potatoes because I'm waiting all day to buy chips, but the queue for the chip uh, kiosk is too long. Uh, and if I had better technology, I would be able to access the chips that I want. Uh, this future of humanity is potatoes. Here is Mark Zuckerberg. Uh, he is brandishing his money to show you that he can access many more potatoes than you can. But what if... In the future, we create new technology, we can overthrow Facebook, stop it from hoarding the potatoes. That is the future I wish to see, a more uh, egalitarian distribution of the potatoes through <laughs> better technology. <laughs> and uh, defeating Mark Zuckerberg by turning him upside down. Uh, are the potatoes, you think, in this, in this talk a metaphor? They may be, or they may be actual potatoes, it's hard to say. Am I uh, trying to win a bet where I say the word potatoes as many times as possible during this, uh, this presentation while really not talking about the future of technology and humanity? It's, who, who's to say, but it's likely, isn't it, at this point? Um, I'm still stuck here. The Mark Zuckerberg slide is not going away. I have very little more I wish to say about him. Just going to sort of busk, think, you know. Oh, okay, here we go. Uh, this is a <laughs> this is a uh, U.S. map scale by anime figure collection size. Uh, you can see in the flyover states very little uh, anime collection uh, ownership. It's all in the elite coastal areas. So, what does this tell us uh, about uh, coastal consumption of potatoes? Absolutely nothing. Uh, <laughs> Are any of these anime figures potatoes? Possibly. Uh, Mr. Potato Head, obviously recently a, 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 a um, controversial figure amongst the right wing in the US because he doesn't have realistic genitals and that was something they were very annoyed about. That's not something I've just made up as I'm just saying words, that's a real thing that happened. And Piers Morgan got very angry about that and talked about it on national television. Uh, so in, in a sense, uh, everything that I've said that's been ridiculous and pointless in this is uh, in no way uh, as pointless as Piers Morgan, who uh, is very much uh, less useful than a potato. And here we have two men, they are betting uh, over access to potatoes. They don't need technology, they just have their pure human strength, but perhaps Perhaps in the future they will get robots to do their betting for them, to do their fighting for them, and uh, the robots will collect the potatoes as well. What a great future that would be, uh, this <laughs> robot-enabled, uh, plentifully uh, potato-enabled future. Uh, I don't even know what slide this is. I'm on at this point. I could go on for a long time here. Uh, with This is the final one. So, in conclusion... Uh, <laughs> Piers Morgan, less useful than a potato. Anime, uh, more popular on the coasts in the US than in the red flyover states. And me, a man who has spent all day thinking about chips, has uh, failed to tell you very much about humanity's future with technology, other than to say that the air fryer is not the future of chips. That was incredible. Incredible. If I wasn't...
if I wasn't already married to him, I'd marry him all over again. Um, if you want to hear any more from Mick, he's on Twitter as at Broken Bottle Boy, where he spends a lot of time slagging off the media. Um, so, yeah, which he managed to shoehorn that in there as well. Okay, we need another volunteer. We oh, do. I think. Up, so I'm just, I'm just checking. I think I need to. Um, so I think some of the people who are keeping me, feeding me this weekend. So between Kim, okay. Joe, lead people, nominate someone and send them forth. Joe, Joe, where are you? Where is he? Yes, come hither. You are going second because you're letting me sleep near everyone. Um, <laughs> but worry not, <laughs> we have eight more decks. All those people putting hands up, I saw you. Uh, in fact, you with the pink hair, I saw you. Ready yourself. Right then, can we get a round of applause for Joe? Choose your fate, Joe. Next step in human evolution. You're about to find out new shocking facts about the human evolution. Is your player just going? Hang on. Chicken. Chicken. Chicken, chicken. Chicken. Chicken, chicken, chicken. But at heart, aren't we all chickens? Aren't we all slightly scared of our friends and loved ones thrusting us in front of an audience to talk PG nonsense in front of a PowerPoint karaoke? Thank you, hon. Um, <laughs> but chickens. Aren't they also the pinnacle of evolution? Are they not something that we should be looking up to as we grow and develop over very slowly of the future uh, millennia, hopefully, before we wipe ourselves out in the next 20 years? Um, but would we not like to emulate the chicken more who just kind of like sits, clucks, lays eggs now and again, and eventually gets eaten? Is that not a peaceful, joyful life to the evolution? <laughs> 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 I kind of want to laser point of this one to take you all through the important facts as I think just describing it I'm going to lose some of the detail here I'm sorry we just need a laser pointer Is the, no no nothing okay um, so we start off with the chicken as I said the ideal concept we should all be looking up to at this point in our lives as something to a, a way something that the humans can ascend to something with wings not very good wings, you know, not ones we get at very distance, but wings, who doesn't want wings? Um, but as we look at the chicken and then we de dive, dive deep into chicken, 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 um, or even, even deeper than the next level of chicken slash chicken, which can have an output of chicken if you want it, um, tasty chicken or more evolved chicken. Um, and, and yeah, it's a whole chicken circle. Oh, good, this is good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a data scientist, so I can't really describe what these graphs in details, but I'm sure they show some correlation between chickens and how humans are going to be in the future. Um, yeah, lots of triangles are the chickens, the circles are the humans, and eventually you're going to kind of mash together, and eventually we will become one, and we'll be great. I mean, we'll be very incredibly stupid but if our heads get cut off, we can run around for a bit afterwards. And is that not worthwhile losing a bit of intelligence in order, in order to have this skill to lose our heads and still keep running and also fly a little bit, not very well. Um, we might be farmed. Um, I'm not gonna you know, deny this fact. We might, the human might be slightly more like um, the matrix where we're farmed for energy, but with more chickeny forms. <laughs> and obviously we're, get, we're getting into nitty gritty here of the chicken human relationship of evolution um, it's chickens all the way down until it's um, zeros and ones which again brings us back to the matrix so in reality and we're heading for a cross between a chicken farm and matrix 
Well, hopefully the first Matrix films, the rest went downhill, let's be honest. Um, even the last one, not too bad, but could have been better. Um, yeah, but us developing the chickens, presumably for our robot overlords and powering them through laying eggs, which then get fried or scrambled or um, otherwise cooked and eaten deliciously by, I suppose, more robots. Maybe the robots in the future will be egg-based egg energy. Um, time will tell, I suppose. Um, <laughs> and our penultimate slide just helps sum up the whole, the whole trajectory we're moving into. Um, some of us are further away from the chicken, evol chicken evolutionary um, standpoint. Um, others have already started to develop rudimentary beaks. Um, <laughs> feathers are known. Some of us are slightly more flighty, um, easily scared and chased off, um, myself amongst them. Um, but as time goes over, and, and I do want to emphasize this is over the next three years, so be ready for some changes. Um, we're going to see a rapid evolution as we all sprout feathers, sprout wings, um, and eventually I'll be able to say it's just chicken, chicken, chicken all the time. Um, but we'll be happy, right? And that's what we all want in life, just a little bit of happiness. Um, what more could we ask for? Thank you all. Thank you very much. I'm going to get my co-host back on stage. And uh, if you want to, uh, 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 if you hit the little pen. Yes, which and then was it, though? Was it was the future of, uh, it, well, next step in human evolution. There we go, lovely. Um, fantastic. Well, I think it's time to pick yeah. someone else. I, th I, think, I, I think it's the, like I think it's the, uh, the person with the pink hair. Um, who genuinely put their hand up so fast. I, th I would apologize to anyone nearby who's now deaf um, from the sheer sound going through the air. But guess, come on stage. Round of applause, come on, come on, come on. Do you wanna, do you wanna get them? Introduce yourself. Thanks for coming to my MF camp talk. I appreciate you all being here and taking the time to come and listen, really appreciate it. My name's Claire. Um, and I am going to talk about the top five benefits and consequences of social media. <laughs> Allegedly. Ready? Yes, let's go. This is terrifying. <laughs> let's go. Go. Is it going? Is it going? What's oh, happening? <laughs> I'm clicking. Oh, hang on. It's, it's still on draw or something. Go. 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 <laughs> Obviously, when we think about social media and all the platforms that are available, we're reclining in our desk chairs. We're having a nice time at work because we never use social media outside of work. It's always when we're working because we just don't want to be working, so we're using social media. We're thinking of gherkins. Gherkins are the key to social media. That is what everybody thinks when they're making the platforms. They're like, right, we're going to build this around the gherkin model, which means we want a nice hard exterior that's difficult to penetrate for people that are coming into social media for the first time. And then when you get to the inside, it's salty. It's full of salty people <laughs> who are miserable all of the time. Every platform. It's full of salty, vinegary people who have an opinion, and it's gherkins all the way down. There's nothing else. So think about that when we're thinking about social media. It's all gherkins. Also, other pickles are available. If you're a big kimchi fan, let's go for the spicy one as well. I mean, there are spicy people on social media. Um, Some of our social media platforms are a bit like one-wheeled vehicles. Um, they are circular. Arguments just go round and round and round the whole time. We never actually resolve anything. We're just going back and forth around the same old arguments, making horrible suggestions, and eventually it ends up where we're smoking a cigarette and regretting the entire decision to just join social media completely. Um, I mean, 
I don't understand why we would be peddling the wheel in the first place. I mean, I guess that's a metaphor for us powering social media with all of our messages and all the trash that we throw in there day in, day out, trying to entertain our friends. And then occasionally there'll be a nice cat picture that'll lift the mood. Um, the umbrella is to shield you from the shit that other people throw on you on social media. As a non-binary person, I get that all the time. It's just trash all the time and people being horrible. So that umbrella is there to protect us and keep us safe. Um, <laughs> social media is a race and sometimes it's a cute and lovely race where you're riding dogs with ducks with tiny hats on and everybody's having a really nice time and then occasionally you have to be balancing on two horses at the same time and you've got no idea what's going on and why you're standing in a tent full of a thousand people talking about social media and horses <laughs> and we end up in this position um, that outfit though is banging could I get... <laughs> The velvet, I'm big into that. The red sash, nice. A strong social media look. Maybe that would trend on TikTok with some sort of fancy dance. Don't know, I can see some guy doing a little boogie. Um, but yeah, we ride all horses and we balance horribly when we're trying to balance our friends and maybe some little secret life that we have. So it's like a metaphor for that and balancing how we balance our lives. And it's a race as well because we're trying to compete with everybody to look better than everybody else. We're trying to be better than the next person on social media. And I would want to be the duck, though, if I was going to be anything in that picture. <laughs> um, I think if there's wetness on social media, you're doing it wrong unless it's only fans, am I right? <laughs> I don't know if that's the right thing, but yeah. I guess wisdom is the overarching thing that we all go for on social media, uh, which then when you peel the wisdom away, it's just wet. The gherkins, very wet, very salty. Um, so we're kind of in this wet world of gherkin saltiness. And then eventually you'll get through to the warm, gooey center of the gherkin. And that's where we all like to think social media is because there is a little bit of happiness. It's quite nice sometimes, but most of the time it's just wet with warm in it. And that's the three W's of social media. Um, I think this might be my penultimate slide. I've lost count, frankly. Um, but yes, the gherkins, it was a good metaphor to start with, I feel, and it was a lovely uh, thing to see the wetness there too. Um, final slide. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I feel like we've come into YouTube territory now with exploding cans of Pepsi and microwaves, but Theodore's theory states that the universe is constructed from elements produced by a massive explosion caused by a microwaving a can of Pepsi which I can only imagine would be a really exciting thing to watch on YouTube, and I would give that an upvote uh, if that was going to come on my feed. Also, recommend cans of Fanta just for the bright orange vividness that would come through. Also, gherkin on top of the can of Pepsi would give you, again, that salty outer wetness that we were going through with the three Ws to tie it all back into that world. Um, so, in summary, social media is salty, uh, full of cyclical arguments, and ducks on horseback with hats. And they were on dogs, weren't they? And fancy outfits. Um, I think that would be all of social media in a nutshell. Um, thank you for coming to my talk. Oh, the standards are so high this evening. So high. This is brilliant. Okay, can we have another volunteer? Oh my goodness, everyone's got their hands up. Um, okay, uh, second row, second in. You had your hand up the fastest. Yep. <laughs> Come on up. <laughs> you actually had your hand up even before I started speaking. <laughs> cool. Um, so you get to pitch. Sure. And you get to introduce yourself as well. Uh, hello, I'm Adam. Um, Thank you for coming to my talk. <laughs> Is everyone having a nice time? Yeah. Great. Um, well, I'd love to talk to you uh, about the evolution of the internet. Um, I'm, of course, talking about the online one. Um, so, <laughs> are you familiar? Click to begin. I'll just press the next button. Oh, wow. Okay. So, um, just to start you off with something very simple, very straightforward, I think before, to set in context the evolution of the internet, let's think about where the internet came from. Uh, when the internet first started, um, I believe in 1962, it was quite straightforward. Um, there are a few basic elements. 
uh, shapes, which are still around in the internet today, um, but back then were quite sort of primitive. I think you could have just a round shape or a, or a square shape, and those were the only two options. A few older people in the crowd remember that. There's a <laughs> Uh, strife people, people of course that powered the sort of engine of it all and um, rain was the main sort of function for dialogue. Uh, and I think if we look back at those early days of the internet, it felt like a very sparse place. Um, it didn't really have the sort of uh, dynamism that we associate with the internet of today. Um, which, let's move it forward to AWS which of course stands for uh, a wet shape, um, <laughs> which takes the original shapes, which were quite prevalent, and moves it on to a, a much more a sort of dynamic area that I'm talking about, uh, well demonstrated by these uh, tall trees. Uh, so these tall trees, which um, you'll be seeing going up around, actually powering us uh, this very weekend at EMF, and um, they are where most of the internet is stored. <laughs> the taller the trees, the taller, and if I leave you with one key piece of information, the taller the trees, the stronger the internet. <laughs> and of course, with the internet now being popular, and uh, you'll see it's moving outside of cities, and um, people are using the internet for video. I've seen it myself, it's amazing. Uh, for messaging, uh, for crypto, uh, and of course, for Azure, or uh, uh, Azure, as some people like to pronounce it. So um, when you're moving uh, data into the cloud, which of course you can do, you need to make sure <laughs> it is secure. And what do we think about when we think about security? Clips. <laughs> yes, 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 see, it, see it's... Uh, making sense to all of you now. Uh, <laughs> this, of course, is the uh, famous icon of um, Microsoft, um, who uh, were the second company to use the internet. And his name is Clypey. Uh, and Clypey, <laughs> Clypey if, you haven't, uh, if you haven't got a Clypey installed at home, um, then you won't be able to use the internet. <laughs> I assure you, you won't be able to. <laughs> So let's take a look, let's take a look. Just by way of interest, uh, audience here, who in the audience has a number one cloud? Let's see, raise your hands, yes, a few sort of basic people in the area. Uh, anyone, anyone, anyone pay a bit extra for number two? Anyone who's got that number two? Yes, the cotton wool buds there. Uh, and some fluffy boy fans. Yes! Now that's making the number ones and number twos feel a bit stupid. And uh, <laughs> number four, of course, we got here at EMF. Anyone else actually lucky enough to have a number four? Have you? Oh, wow, I'm coming around to your house. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, be, we'll be surfing those clouds all days. Get them shapes, get them shapes. You want your fast shapes, your big shapes. Oh, that's some, that's some good internet there. So really, we're seeing the internet evolving at quite a pace, uh, really, since 1962. <laughs> if you look at these three models here, um, all the way to the on-prem, and on-prem is sort of still in development, uh, and I think, you know, with this sort of new corgi shape, um, it's going to make the internet lower to the ground, uh, which of course is going to stop it being hit so much. It's already got the Queen's backing, which is going to help. <laughs> it's done wonders for Waitrose, so think what it'll do for the internet. Um, the hybrid cloud is good, but think about what happens if it gets muddy. <laughs> yeah, no one wants a muddy internet. We'll remember that. Uh, but a, a pure cloud, of course, is good, um, but must be certified if you want to enter your internet into Crufts. <laughs> Which, of course, is, is um, good for the internet, but bad for dogs. Thank you. Oh, that, that was a good one. Very good one. 
Let's go back to the top. Not, now you all know how to use the internet. It's just okay, so let's go that one out. Okay, your turn to pick. My turn to pick. Okay, let's 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 not be blind for a moment. These are some strong lights. Who, who have we to, got? You're gonna have to go down there in the audience. I think I'm gonna have to go right. I'm going to the yeah. back, right? Because as we all know, the real winners here are the people not getting love in the crappy seats. <laughs> at the back, right, let's have a look who we got, who is, I'm going to... Maybe the real part Oh, yeah, no, oh, the, the, the big waves here. Yes, oh. you, you are an ex-contestant. What is your name? My name is Anya. It's... Anya, come with me. Woo! Big round of applause for Anya. Woo! As we get our daily steps in. Everyone at the back with an Apple Watch is like, ooh, could get a few more in before we start. Yep, if you want to head upstairs. Narrowing. I know. <laughs> oh, I should have brought my water up for me. I'll get my lovely assistant. Yes, you get. If, if, if Anya's lovely assistant could bring her water up, please. That's Sean. <laughs> bring up my water. <laughs> the lovely Sean. <laughs> God, I'm blind in there. Come on, come on. <laughs> what do you think we're doing? Paying you? Come on, quick. <laughs> I'll go with crypto, because it's kind of low-hanging fruit. Yeah, you, you. I would like to say that she said crypto because it's low-hanging fruit. <laughs> I like you already. Correct answer. Yes, take the podium. Tap your selection. Oh, this is craft. You, did you just set a timer? Yeah. Yeah. Smart. Hello. Oh. Just hit the next button at the bottom. Oh, yeah. Hello everyone, my name is Anya Bullock and I'm very well versed in speaking bollocks. No, that's not my surname, it's Bullock. And I also previously used to write um, speeches for an Irish government minister, so <laughs> but take that as you will. <laughs> um, so what is crypto? Um, as I said before, crypto is kind of a low-hanging fruit and that's why I have put some low-hang um, coin underneath your um, seats today. So please keep an eye on it as it is highly fungible. Um, so, as I said before, crypto has a high focus on apes and ape-like content, such as, you know, with the bored apes um, kind of based um, products, which use crypto in a very sophisticated and complex, randomly generated way, um, totally. And also, they use weird names, like all weird stuff that is usually a pyramid scheme, they use weird names. And they're also a curiosity to some and a way of life to others. Um, some crypto exists. Um, in, you know, in the cloud, in other places of that thing. Um, so, Ninjin. <laughs> Nin <laughs> Ninjin are, in fact, the sexiest crypto of all because they are particularly leggy and pale. Um, <laughs> Um, so, as I said before, they come from the Japanese internet, which, as we know, is the most dangerous and um, complex of all internets, because it is largely based off tables to this present day, <laughs> and basic HTML, which allows these creatures to survive, even in this age of global warming. Um, they can also be found in the Antarctic, um, where they're able to, that's where their, their mines are. That is actually where the crypto is mined, is where the ninjin are. Now, they say they are 20 to 30 me me meters tall. That isn't actually meters, that's how much they are worth in millions. So every, nin <laughs> every ninjin is worth approximately 30 million, um, I was going to say euro, but it should be billion yen, Mothman. Um, they are only the sec second sexiest of all crypto because I really said Ninjin were the sexiest. <laughs> and they come from a place called West Virginia and Country Roads. <laughs> Take them home, if you know what I mean. Um, anyone here fancy Mothman? Anyone here who thinks Mothman is sexy, can you give me a woo, you know? Mothman! Mothman! <laughs> um, that's completely random, it said that about Country Roads. That's so weird, I didn't see that. <laughs> because I prepared this earlier, that's why, um, of course. Um, so as I said, they have wings, red eyes, and they're moths. So by that, I mean, you all know that joke, I'm, I'm not gonna tell that joke, wait, wait. No, I'm running out of time for the moth-related jokes. Yeah, they wouldn't like, they'd like this bright light over here that's making it impossible for me to see anyway. Um, what else would I say about moth men? 
Um, when a mothman goes to the doctor, um, I don't even know what to say. They're iconic. <laughs> They're beautiful. I hope one day I can see a mothman. That's all I can really say about them. So as I think my previous speaker here spoke a lot on the topic of chickens. So I don't want to step on anyone's toes by talking about ill with your strike. Um, <laughs> Um, potato sacks. Well, um, as, a, as our previous speaker also spoke about potatoes, um, this is where they link back into crypto because potatoes are quite expensive and thus a potato sack is an even more expensive kind of, um, what do you call it, good of conspicuous consumption. They're very sexy. Um, lantern, like with Mothmen, you see how idle would strike kind of bring together the previous components of this presentation because... Um, they are very attractive, like Ninjin. They like lights, like Mothmen. Um, large sticks. Um, how would I describe large sticks to you? And one local pub. <laughs> That's just a party. Um, yeah, they like to party, basically. You bring them down to the pub, and look at that thing. British big cats. Woo! Okay, I'm just going to see. Um, so they're based in many locations. Bodmin, Ludlow. <laughs> Northamptonshire, Exmoor, Shropshire, um, Ledbury. Typical hunting grounds. Large cat, unimpressed. <laughs> so um, I think we spoke a bit about Ninjin. So Ninjin and big, um, big cats have actually crossbred in the past, creating something known as long cats, if you've heard of him. Um, they are not actually a threat to humans. I know I just put this lead breathing thing in here to scare you, but all, all big cats want you to do is invest in their crypto products. Um, <laughs> um, why he's unimpressed? He's unimpressed because he's presently been investigated by, um, I don't know what the anti-fraud department is called in the UK, but he's been he's vented by um, HMRC for tax fraud. So that's why he's so unimpressed. That's his solicitor there. Um, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, hope you all enjoyed. Um, that was a less. <laughs> that was fantastic. That's less um, confusing than everyone else's. I think. <laughs> you, you, I'll, let me give you the roaming mic. Yeah. Right, I'm coming for you. Um, okay. I feel like Annika Rice for anyone who's old enough to remember Annika Rice. Anyway. Um, I'm going further back, further back, further back, further. Now for the most satisfying okay, one. Oh yeah. Oh. Be gone, crypto. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Get your hand up. <laughs> cool. Okay, come on up. What's your name? Alana. Alana's up next. Turn it. There we go. Topics are narrowing, but there's still lots of exciting slides. And then some. <laughs> oh, yeah, Dave, just pull it to, towards face. Great. Can you hear me now? Yeah? Is that good, everyone? Yeah. Fab. Okay, today I'm going to do promoting health and well being in space. Space. Pretty when nice. you're ready to start. This one? That's, yep, that's it. Perfect. Hey. All right, hope you guys are ready for a, an extremely interesting five minutes. I think I am, so let's go. <laughs> so I have had to study for a very long time to understand the images that you're seeing here on this screen. So I'm not going to try and over-explain it to you guys. <laughs> But well-being, space, astronauts, it's all very complicated. I mean, to really be happy, you really have to have the, as I like to pronounce it, <coughs> pick chocolate. <laughs> but what does that mean? What does that really mean? Well, simply, that just means the lack of sunshine. They don't have any sunshine. They can't go out and get vitamin D. They have to get pictures of sunshine and happy rainbows and all of that to stare at for hours at a time. That is actually the practice that they spend months learning. But that's not all, guys. No, 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 that's not all. This is actually the flow that you can see that they have to get into, a form of meditation, if you will. 
Now, it does take many years. That's why astronauts have to spend so long before they go out. It's learning the gob vlog. <laughs> yeah, and you may be wondering, how does someone get into the flow of gob vlog? <laughs> well, it normally tends to be surrounding yourself with candles, very serene, <laughs> thinking about that wangol rajal. And that just means that you're in a peace. I know. There's some heartbreaking stuff here that astronauts really have to go through for their well being. But that's not all. I mean, the amount of energy can't just come from within, can it? We have to fuel ourselves, but when you're in space, you don't want normal human food. I mean, I think many of us have heard about potatoes today. <laughs> but I really think that the reason astronauts can stay happy, people can stay happy out in space, is utapau, a food only found to grow in the stars. <laughs> Very expensive, you can buy it. I am a reseller, you can find my Amazon links on my Twitter. <laughs> I do get some money off of it, but I promise you it doesn't charge you any more. Delicious, delicious. Um, quite hard to find, quite hard to mine, in fact. Um, but definitely would recommend if you are looking for that health boost. Um, yeah, okay, moving on to the real stuff now, guys. <clears throat> I'm going to have a sore throat by this. I haven't been practicing the language very long. The gob vlog. Yeah, gob vlog. Now, what is gob vlog? Well, when you think of well being, what do you think of? Yes, journaling. <laughs> Hello, obviously. You're in space. Wonderful. You're surrounded by so much stuff. But don't forget to take the time to do your gob vlog. Fill in your journal five minutes every day. Good for the mind, good for the soul. And if you're eating the stuff that I previously mentioned uh, that you can buy off of me on my links, then that works even better. You can write all about it. Go through an emotional experience and journey. Yes, yeah, it's, very, it's very good stuff, very good stuff. Oh, right, guys. I don't know if you're ready for the kicker now. <clears throat> the Mahudipo. Now, this is where it gets extremely complicated, guys. As you can probably see, I mean, I don't know how many of you understand this. Put your hands up if you do. Well, there's actually a few of you guys. There's actually a few of you. I'm quite surprised. I'm quite. You must have read my latest book. You can um, you can buy it from Amazon. I have links online. <laughs> So this is the ancient study of the mathematical well-being formula. So really all you have to do is um, this formula every single day. Uh, I'm not going to tell you what it is. Again, to, to understand how to do that, please buy my book through my links online. Thank you. Um, so I hope today you've kind of gathered an understanding of health, well-being, in space particularly. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Now, this is someone who clearly has honor. That was amazing. All right, quick show. Oh, sorry. Quick show of hands. Who can speak Klingon? Uh, so just put hands down. Who can? Yeah, that guy can. Who can actually speak Klingon? Yeah, sorry about that. Okay, hands up for Gavin and go. Oh God, there's a lot of you. Right, hang on. I'm going to go this side. Let's go this side. Let's oh, 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 oh. go. We're getting a thing in today. Um, oh, you, this, you, you cannot be waving any harder. Come on. <laughs> Come on. What's your name? I'm Lewis. Willis? Lewis. Lewis. Okay. I am deaf, apparently. Up you go, Lewis. Let's get a round of applause for Lewis. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sorry. I need to click the back button. That's... Um, there we go. Okay, well, hang on, we have to... We have to scrip, scrip it out. Oh. Ooh, I scribbled too much. It's all right. 
the irony is I do actually have a pen for this. I should probably get out, which would make way more sense. Um, Lewis. Hmm. Okay. I can't use credits, can I? Uh, no, because those are the credits. <laughs> One slide. Hmm. Easy mode. No. Hmm. Okay, okay. Let's, uh, let's go with uh, this one. Why Elon Musk is wrong about my friend Al. <laughs> Now, just a little bit of background about this one. Uh, Al is short for Albert, and he and Elon had a chance encounter back in 1982 when Al was zero and Elon was 274. <laughs> they met at a restaurant in California where, unfortunately, Al, being neither of, of sound mind or able to speak, was crying loudly at a restaurant, and uh, Elon didn't like that and slapped him around the face. And, of course, this leads me here today Googling how to speak at EMF, as clearly so far, it's not been an exactly smooth path having made up a person in the zero seconds flat. And I can tell you, that is not the face of someone who knows what they're talking about uh, in front of lots of people who may or may not remember some uh, foul-ups for, for many years to come. So, Elon Musk is a fairly contentious person. He has uh, his fingers in many pies from cryptos to NFTs that we've heard a lot about here. And the pictures there are describing exactly what I'm going to be doing as I'm trying to pass just what to say next. <laughs> Maybe I don't have something. Maybe I do have something. I'm going to be wearing the same pained expression no matter what in the hope of getting some cheap laughs from my physical torture. But going back to what I was saying before, both of these pictures are in fact NFTs. <laughs> but no, no, that's not the funny part. They're in fact infringing upon each other as they are mirror images of each other. Now, unfortunately, I've, this whole topic has made me think about uh, NFTs and uh, just checking my phone right here, it looks like my portfolio has fallen 17% since I started talking. <laughs> So I really hope this, uh, this pitch can finish very quickly. Um, unfortunately, Al could not be here uh, to, to witness this. Um, and as a result, I am suffering from intense mental pain, as I know how much he would enjoy me talking about him being slapped in the face as a baby by Elon Musk, and future uh, regaling you all with tales of, uh, of how Elon Musk has gone onto Twitter to publicly berate his family and reveal in tweets one by one exactly what has gone on in his browser history. Now, of course, Elon Musk has never been uh, shy of, of controversy. Uh, when he unveiled uh, the, the, the Tesla truck and got a brick and threw it uh, in, into, uh, into the truck, that was, in fact, not a demonstration for uh, the would-be investors. It was a metaphor for what he really wished he could have done to Al as a baby. <laughs> now, you see, I do sympathize a little with him because it was a really fancy restaurant who was having a wonderful plate of foie gras at the time. And you know, who brings a baby to a, to a fancy restaurant like that? In fact, I'm starting to think Elon Musk might have been right about Al after all. <laughs> I mean, I'm more of a software guy and, and, and Al was more of a, a, a hardware engineer, so being natural enemies, I'm not sure why I volunteered to, uh, to defend him in the first place. Now, choosing this as, as a topic, uh, coming up with a person called Al instead of talking about AI like a normal person, is enough to send someone to the bottle. <laughs> now, I understand Barbot will be operating after this, and let me tell you, I will be frequenting their services quite a bit. Um, but you know what? I think I've been a little bit too hard about Al. You know, he's, uh, he's an upstanding member of the scientific community, and if he's been able to make someone as powerful as Elon Musk angry, I think maybe we can find it in our hearts to all make Elon Musk himself a little bit angry as well. <laughs> so, citizens of EMF, I would like you to take your phones, I would like you to go to Twitter, and I would like you to tweet to Elon Musk. <laughs> I want you to think of your favorite 
letter of the alphabet, tweeted to him with no further context. <laughs> And perhaps he can take all of those letters and use it as inspiration for his next child. <laughs> Which, even though I've forgotten to look at the screen for the past 30 seconds, I think that would be everyone's reaction when we hear whatever, ba sorry, children, whatever crazy name he is going to be coming up with next. And just like Elon Musk, we all have a fin. Thank you. That was absolutely fantastic. For legal reasons, if Elon Musk is watching, that was a joke, Elon. They exist. Okay, another... Have we got, how many have we left? Um, well, we've got... Uh, oh, we need to uh, just... We've only got two left. We need to delete Elon. Delete... Ah, oh, if only. I wish. Uh, we've got three, so we have... Oh, three left. Three left, and then we wrap up and choose a winner of the trophy. Ooh, it's just in front. Um, so yeah, do you want to? Um, no, yeah, it's ju it's just there. It's, sorry, it's behind the big screen that doesn't work. Um, okay, so I should go and pick someone. Go on, go on, find a find a willing volunteer <laughs> no, or a find volunteer. An unwilling volunteer, that'd be more fun. I mean, we also saw the word guinea pig scratched out at the start. Um, That's there for a reason. I, go, I, I was this side last time. I, no, wait, I can't. I lost track. Um, um, I'm, 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 I go. <laughs> okay, do you want to go? Okay, <laughs> we have we have a junior competitor. A junior competitor. Let's go. Okay. Um, What's this name? Woodrow. Okay, this is Woodrow. We will briefly do some logistics. Just stand next to the mic a second. Hello. Yeah, we can yeah. see him. It's good. It's good. There okay, we go. this is Woodrow. Hello. So take her pick. Take her pick of the remaining topics. Emoji. Emoji. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. And it will go automatically after this one. All right. The pyramid of power. You see, emojis have always represented power. On Twitter, what has been the most used emoji and why? It's probably been the middle finger. <laughs> there have been many reasons. Arguments, intelligence, affluence, and flatulence. <laughs> Emojis have not, emojis have represented intelligence. Sim, simple symbols representing phrases or sentences. Affluence, I don't know what that means. Many companies, including Apple, have spent ages designing these minimal, min minimalist designs that will be used for generations. These are just one of the examples of, I think, Steve Jobs' uh, uh, rough understandings of the p core power of emojis. Um, moving on with the sophisticated side of these complicated symbols, we can see that not only does it represent sentences, but mathematical equations. Jaunty million Ruster Patrick was a is a very famous philosopher. <laughs> so he, there is very deep meaning to his words, and I think sign up to volunteer at EMF is not only mentioned quite a lot here. <laughs> also has a lot of significant meaning. And going back to 
emojis. <laughs> this sentence can be represented with many of them that have already existed, showing the monumental power of these simple symbols. <laughs> One of the core downsides of emojis has been the funny ones. <laughs> People using to get a quick giggle or laugh. Something like this can be so easily represented as an emoji and someone's gonna say, oh, that's funny. It's not. <laughs> Emojis should be used as a, the core foundations of language, but this isn't. This is a moose saying sheep. <laughs> this is patronizing the founders of this amazing language. Now, emojis can be misunderstood. <laughs> a sad face can be thought to be funny. And this stock photo also can be seen as funny when maybe she's really angry that her car has broken down and her children are dead. A tweet on Twitter saying, I just attended my grandmother's funeral, sad face, may be thought to be funny. Do not look at the comments. <laughs> this is showing one of the terrible, horrible parts of, thank you for listening to me. Fantastic. Oh, that was well, amazing. Was, I've got a great future in academia. <laughs> Unless everyone was hiding it really well earlier, Woodrow is our youngest competitor this evening. Yeah. Uh, he's I, 12. I feel a strong future in comedy here. <laughs> I think so. Future in academia right. and comedy. We've got um, two more. Two so more. Your turn to choose. Yes, let's go uh, find an interesting person on the left-hand side of the crowd. Someone from stage is going to murder me for jumping off it like that. Uh, left hand side. Uh, let's see. Wow, somebody's physically lit themselves up. <laughs> yes, you physically spotlighting yourself in the audience. Come hither. Frank, I'm amazed it was no one else. Have you seen the amount of NeoPixels on this site this weekend? What is your name? Lucy. Oh, hello, Ruth, Lucy. Um, Let's get you on stage. I think uh, a round of applause for Dr. Lucy Rogers, I believe. Now, if I'm not mistaken, the last time you were here, uh, you were talking about chickens. Chicken, chicken. Um, so oh, you're down Lucy. to two. <laughs> OK, we're expecting good things from Lucy. Yeah, that. I've come on stage today to share with you my joy, absolute joy, in communication. Now, see this picture. A picture paints a thousand words. You don't have to sit there wondering what I'm talking about. You know, you know exactly what is going to come next. You know that you don't want to be there. <laughs> this is the sort of image that grabs us, that will stick in your mind 
at least until the next slide. <laughs> but see the juxtaposition of the escape sign behind. Communication is all about communicating. <laughs> and when we have slides and presentations, a simple graph, just two items on the axis, you can look at that and see exactly that if you're short, you're not going to get paid much. <laughs> now, this could because, be because most short people are children. <laughs> and actually, we're not allowed to make them work anymore. And if you are a giant, well, the world's your oyster. You can even charge what you want. <laughs> Having slides that move, it attracts the attention away from the speaker. I don't recommend it. <laughs> Actually, I also recommend a microphone that you can walk around with so you can actually say, hey, and take the attention away. Thank you. <laughs> so you can take the attention away from the burger and the whole fact that the planet is getting warmer and the only thing that polar bears are going to be able to eat are the EMF burgers. <laughs> They're going to come down here uh, because obviously they're really good with raspberry pies. I don't know if you know this, uh, but polar bears programming raspberry pies. You can see them down at Black Gang Chine on the Isle of Wight. Uh, there's also some robot dinosaurs that are really quite cool with, ro with raspberry pies in them. But the... Oh, sorry. <laughs> this is also at Black Gang Chine. <laughs> it's a theme park on the Isle of Wight. And, um, well, actually... I think, can, can we all stand up? Because we all now need to stand up. Come on, stand up, everybody, please. And, and we just need to get in this position. Because audience interaction is key in communication. And, and so, you know, punch, punch. Uh, we're, all, we're all engaged now. Are we all engaged? We've got this, yes. See, yes. We can go for it. And I know that many of you have actually got those red pants on. Underneath, underneath. Um, but you, you, and we can't hear the music. See, the music, it's going and it's beating and it's really quite good, but actually, you don't want to hear me sing. <laughs> Not even the red ones. However, this cow is lying. So you can't actually see, really, the back end. Red lycra. I know these things, I, I know. So you can't actually believe everything that you read on a slide. Uh, communication is all about convincing the audience that what you're saying is true, even when it may not be. Oh, no, that's politics. Be careful when you put slides up and give people time to read what's up there and really feel it. Communication is all about communicating. Fantastic, thank you. Okay, last person. Okay, would... the final one. What topic is left? We have one left, which is... Uh, God, <laughs> no, the sound guy hates no. us tonight. He's like, no, stop it. Um, oh, wait. Yeah, yeah there's yeah. only one left, and everyone's been avoiding it, and it's how to make a Geiger counter with smart light bulbs. Now, I, I don't know if there are any light bulb experts in the audience. If there are, we don't want to hear from you. <laughs> 
and we don't want to hear from anyone who knows anything about radioactivity because uh, that would spoil the fun, wouldn't it? So I'm going to come and find someone. Just for reference, we have had several talks on radioactivity, and well, there's a radioactive the... xylophone in the lounge, so you know. Yeah, this is the problem when you use GPT-3 and it does too good a job and everything is completely and utterly understandable. Um, here, right here, yeah. Here This is Ben. Oh, um, ben, do you know anything about light bulbs or radioactivity? Or are you a complete novice to this particular, are you a complete novice to this subject or are you an expert? He's not an expert, no, so just, just but he will be after five minutes check. are up. Do you own a light bulb? Do I own a light bulb? Yeah, technically. Oh. 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 What's your name? Ben. 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 Oh, if you want to tap it, Ben. There we go. Yeah, so yeah. If you just forward that when you're ready to start. Cool. Ladies and gentlemen, and those of you not so ascribed, I'm here to tell you how to build a Geiger counter. But before we begin, we need to work out exactly what is a Geiger counter. Now, 95% of emails that everybody gets every day ask this very question. <laughs> You've all had them from colleagues, from family, from dearest relations. They just keep asking, what is a Geiger counter? What are these Geigs, and how do I count them? Well, we're going to find out. A Geiger counter, it counts. That's about all it does. It's got a funny name because it was invented by Alfred Geiger. So back in the 1800s, he thought, I would like to do some counting, but I need something to help me. And I don't quite believe in writing things down. And so, what he did was he asked a child. <laughs> now, we've been over this in previous talks. This would not fly to this day. So Geiger counters in the modern day and age have been essentially a lot more modernized. Uh, we no longer just find an arbitrary child and tell them, please start counting. <laughs> no, don't stop counting. I didn't tell you to stop. That doesn't fly. CPS would be around in a minute. So what do we do instead? Well, this is where we start to get involved with the Internet of Things. <laughs> now, the question that a lot of us have asked ourselves is, are smart light bulbs getting too smart? And that's a question really for another talk. <laughs> but regardless of the moral views you may or may not hold about smart light bulbs, We do know what they're made of. And I hate to tell you this, if any of you have taken your smart light bulbs out of your, kind of your kitchen, your living room, taken them down, ground them up into a paste, put them in your cereal, it's so tempting, I think this every morning. Don't do it, it's poisonous. <laughs> However, sometimes poison can be used on people you don't like. <laughs> so take your light bulbs, Smart or otherwise. The smart ones have been really recommended, but that was just a word from our sponsors, really. I'll let you in on a secret. You can use dumb light bulbs. It doesn't matter. They're still poisonous. They will still kill your enemies. So the, we're, we're getting a little off track, though. The reason that we might want to poison them is not actually to kill them. As satisfying as that may be, as much as you may hate this person, there is an antidote. You can just turn off the light bulb. <laughs> But until you give them that antidote, you can get them to count. And <laughs> this slide takes me back. <laughs> when I was learning to count, when my arch enemy had poisoned me with a ground up light bulb and said, learn to count or I will not turn on the antidote, I thought back, when did I learn to count? I was in the Caribbean. <laughs> and my parents said to me, look out to the bow of this cruise ship and see which animals are jumping. And for every animal you see, you can imagine a brand new number. And so, as an example here, you see we have dolphins, we have cows. We only managed to get a, uh, a capture of these two, but there were, there were so many of them. It was just like Noah and the Ark. 
There were, there were turtles splashing about. There were sparrows. There were even humans. <laughs> so, going back to Geiger counting. Now this couple, Alfred Geiger and his wife, Alfredo Geiger, <laughs> they wanted to leave a legacy. And I believe they may have done so. Now, of course, in their era, they didn't have any light bulbs. So they needed to find other ways to poison people and get them to count. But such poisons were very easy to find. It was the Victorian era. You could just go out on the street with a cup. <laughs> so, is this the final slide? I can't remember. But I will summarize anyway and hope I can count to five. <laughs> Phew. <laughs> that was fantastic. Thank you very much. Thank you. I think that's it. I think, that is I think it. that's it. So, we come to the important part. We need to find a winner. It's going to yeah. involve cheering. It is. I'll get the trophy. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, save that energy for the cheers, remember? Cheering is how we work these things out. I hope you all like being loud. And if you don't, I'll get the Scott Consulate to do it instead, because they're pretty damn loud. Right, so as a reminder, and I really hope I get all these names right because I'm from Yorkshire originally and that doesn't lend itself well to pronouncing things. So, first up, I believe we had Mick. We did have Mick, I remember him, I'm married yeah, to him. Yeah, that, uh, that's a good way to remember yeah. things, I saw that talk <laughs> earlier. Um, with the future of humanity and the rise of machines. And potatoes. And potatoes, That was a potatoes. little tribute to my own heritage. That's, that's good. Uh, then we had Joe with we the did. human evolution. Uh, Claire. Uh, covering social media. Yeah, very well indeed, yeah. Very, very well. Well, can, well, we'll run them through them all again and you can share yep. in a moment. Don't yeah, yeah. Worry. We'll give you a um, we'll, we'll Wait for We're it. We're just reminding you. Yep. Um, uh, Alana? With... Alana, who speaks many languages, including ones that don't even exist. That's amazing. I know, right? Um, how's, that? how's Lewis? Yes. Yes, um, with... Lewis, uh, whose unfortunate friend Al is no friend of Elon. I'm going to get sued by Elon Musk. Um, and then we had our junior entry, Woodrow. Woodrow, yes. uh, great things will happen. Yes, uh, we unfortunately gave Lucy Rogers a roaming microphone, and for that we apologise. She got you on your feet. Yeah, She's... exercise is important. Yep. Oh, oh no, my phone went off. Technology. Yeah, I know, right? And then finally, last but certainly not least, Ben. Ben, who says he doesn't know anything about light bulbs or Geiger counters, but seemed to know quite a bit, actually. Okay, so... so we will get you to cheer for each of these in turn. So we'll right. start from the top. So first up, please cheer for Mick with the rise of the machines. Woo! Good, good. Got some fans. Oh, well, yeah. I feel I, I'm, I probably shouldn't cheer because that's nepotism. But uh, I don't think that's bias. No. Does it? No. Um, and then we have Joe with the human chicken evolution chicken 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 chicken. chicken, chicken. chicken. Joe. Woo! Solid. Solid. Uh, I believe that's Claire next. Claire with social media. <laughs> good, good cheering. Everyone wanted a pickle after that one, yep. Uh, who was next? Adam. Adam. Adam, the evolution of the internet with the fluffy boy clouds. Fluffy boys. I believe we then have Anya. And we did have Anya, who very ably told us about the sexiest cryptos out there. <laughs> We see you all, you cryptid fans. We see you. Uh, and then Alana with... What with was that? Alana with her space, space travel. That was space spa space her space health, health and beauty. Health and health and <laughs> it's on the slide. I could just look. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, Lewis. Uh, yeah. And getting us sued. Lewis, uh, who's going to get us sued by Elon. Yep. <laughs> There are lawyers in a chopper. Um, and then we have our junior entry, Woodrow, with the power of emojis. Woodrow. Okay. I, th I think we've got that one. Okay, okay. Um, 
Next up is Dr. Lucy Rogers, uh, warning about the dangers of the singularity. Yeah. Everyone's annoyed they had to stand up. <laughs> and then finally, Ben. Ben and his agriculture. Okay. I think that's fair. I, I think we have that's a clear winner. Conclusive. I think okay. we have a clear winner. Come on up, Woodrow. I think we've got a winner here. Come claim your prize. <laughs> Serious question. Is there some form of parent or guardian who wants a picture of him claiming this prize? Come on. Come, come get a picture. Come on. Nope. That is a giant metal bolt. Congratulations, Dad. You've got to put this somewhere now. It has a face. Look at this. There we go. Right, let's go. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay, one more big round of applause. Let's get some credits on the screen. Big thanks to everybody. So, I will, I will let Kate do this because you've provided a whole bunch of this. Oh, okay, so uh, slides will appear online after the event. <laughs> there you go. Thank you for that. Uh, yeah, so thank you very much, everyone who came along to support them. And thank you so much for our volunteers who did wonderful things. Uh, we'd like to give them all a big round of applause again. Yeah, big one. Fantastic. So, to round off, this has been Dr. Kate Devlin, a fantastic speaker. What do you do? What do I do? Uh, I'm, a, I'm an academic uh, working on AI and society. Um, and sex robots. <laughs> yep. I've been Froggy. I do nothing that would you would follow me about, but do follow me on Twitter. Sometimes it's interesting. Who knows? This has been GPT-3 AI-powered PowerPoint karaoke. You've been amazing presenters, a fantastic audience. Give yourselves a round of applause for all this energy. And I believe that is it for stage A. Go forth. Enjoy electromagnetic field. Tell your friends. See you tell next your family. Time. <laughs>